Welcome to Enriches Papers. Today we're going to talk about creating your own custom made objective bases. What's up, Miniatures Paintbrush Legion? This is Rob, your host, and today we're going to talk totally about making your own custom-made objective bases. Now, this came up for me because when I looked at the 40K objective bases, I was, you know, it was cool, but there weren't any real numbers on them, so I really didn't know which was objective one, two, three, four, five, all the way through six. I had no real idea, idea how to do that. Now, I could have painted numbers on the objective bases that come with 40K objective bases, uh, but there was another thing. I bought this uh, Kristen War Shrine, and that actually has one of the objective bases as part of that Kristen War Shrine's kind of uh, accoutrement that goes on the top of there. And I didn't want to confuse one with another one, so I was like, I'm at a dilemma. So what I did was, is I ventured out and say, hey, I have all these bits and I have all these bases. Why don't I create objective bases? And in order to do that, I was going to need something that had some really fancy numbers. So I went over to this site called Horde of Bits because one of my friends had suggested it for something else that I was looking for for my Stormcast Eternal Army. And I was perusing and browsing all throughout it. And I got over the, I got past the, bit parts and I went into the gaming part as in board games and I was just just looking through the site and cruising and I, I came across uh, these kind of cogs that had numbers on it and once I saw that I said this would be perfect and I mean perfect when it comes to creating objective bases or custom ones for my 40k so uh, I set about thinking about and designing different kind of bases based on all the bits that I've been collecting while building all the models that I had lying around. So I say, hey, I can use this and I can use that. And being a bit of a, a crafting type of DM that I am on the side, uh, building houses and stuff like that out of styrofoam, I used my creative uh, ability, I guess my vision, in order to sketch out some ideas for creating different kind of objective markers. Today, I'm gonna to showcase one of these objective markers and show you how I came up with the idea and just kind of stuck things together using things like uh, nail art because they're small little beasts of things that you can use. Yeah, uh, get into that. And bringing that into the mix as well as using little blocks that I found from little children's set and to help them count. So using all different kinds of materials. A lot of people get kind of held back because they feel like they only need to use the bits that come from the bit box. But if you expand your repertoire just a little bit and you include everything that you can find that's small. Alrighty, so we're gonna start with some flat green uh, from Vallejo Model Color, which is a great green if you wanna do, say, Dark Angels or something like that. I was going for that Dark Angels theme for this. Uh, this actual bit here is taken from a Necromunda set. I think that the set is pretty cool, although I do not play Necromunda. So I wanted to kind of do something with this stuff. So I figured, why not include it into an objective marker? Okay, so flat green, but this time I'm putting a little bit of white ink into the mixture and the airbrush. And I'm gonna do a zenithal here, just so I can get some of that highlighting. And I want that transition to come out really, really nice. And I want the transitions to come out in steps. You know, when you add subtlety to your transitions, it makes them really buttery smooth. And in order to add subtleties into it, you want to step up your zenithal. Now I'm going to do some, to tie it all together, I'm going to do some ink, uh, black ink from Vallejo just to get that dark, dark angels kind of look right there. Really great color for dark angels, I gotta tell you, but it really brings that green out. And I haven't really painted anything green in a while, and sometimes when I don't paint a color, I kind of get an itch to do that, just to paint a color and have some fun with some paint. 
Plus, I have a ton of paint, so I kind of want to use it all. I want to validate. Uh, all right, some gray primer up. So sometimes when I'm painting bone, instead of just going from a dark color into bone, which is, you know, takes 10 billion layers, what I'm going to do is I'm going to step it up by, you know, starting with some green. I mean, starting with some gray, sorry, a lighter color, and then just, like, get it lighter gray, and then sometimes bone. This primer from Steinal Res that I use is pretty a light, a pretty light gray, and it's, uh, the opacity is pretty high. That means I'm going to have great coverage with it and it's self-leveling so that's awesome and then uh, I'm also going to do the same with the boards on the message boards on the side and the message boards on the side I'm going to add some uh, details to it I'm going to add all the people that helped me out initials for the people that helped me out in this channel um, my wife Nicole Alia um, I have Frost and Fist several others Vince Ranchuela I put them all up on there and of course I put the TMP logo on those things because uh, sometimes I sneak a TMP logo on those uh, sorry so time for the bone white I'm gonna hit the bone white all the areas that I have painted up gray with the undertones right there and it makes painting white a little bit easier because sometimes the opacity of white is just I mean if you're not going super thick then it's gonna take you a while to build it up uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna go from gray and it still comes out you know a little chalky uh, at first and then it builds up to that. Okay, so now I'm gonna spare you all the, the layers I did. Seraphon Sepia now, I'm gonna add some tone over uh, to this scroll work that's going on. The, uh, it's like the 40, uh, 40K toilet paper, people call it. <laughs> well, the scroll work coming out, I thought it would be kind of neat just to add some variation. I do love Seraphon Sepia uh, through an airbrush because it just adds all that bone type of brownish color to it and so much fun to use. Okay, now. Now, see Vince Ventuela, Nicole Alia, uh, Idik Beer, uh, Frost and Fist. I put all those in there. Uh, really helped out the channel. Uh, I wish I had more boards because I'd love to, you know, shout a whole bunch of people out. But I just make this message board, this objective marker, personal to me by adding those notices there uh, for all people that kind of inspire me. And there are so many more. <laughs> if I could write that small, uh, I would definitely write that small and include all the names. All right, some yellow in the back because yellow and green when it's time to get ill. If you know that rap song, then you're about as old as I am. <laughs> okay, so um, use the side of the brush instead of the tip of the brush whenever you're trying to like edge something. It makes it so much easier. Also, it preserves the edge of your brush. <laughs> Consequently, right? If you're using the side of the brush, you're not using the edge. It preserves the edge. All right, I'm going to add a helmet to this mixture of this base, this custom base that I'm making right here. Yeah. So yeah, the ones that are coming out right now with Ninth Ed and all, it, it, it's okay. But you know, some are Necron bases. They don't really apply to everything. So I like to make my own bases. And yeah, they do recommend 40 inch bases. And since I'm not, you know, tournament playing in my basement and my friend's house, I don't care <laughs> as long as it looks cool. All right, some nail art. Check that out. If you want small bits and gadgets, check out some nail art. It goes a long way. And these gizmos are amazing. I want to make like a glowing kind of cube. Uh, and I got this uh, cube from like a little math set to teach you know kids how to count numbers. Someone was throwing it out in my school, and I was like, uh, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll repurpose it for something. And lo and behold, it becomes an objective marker. All right, so what you want to do to make something glowing is you want it to go from a really high contrast, a really deep color, all the way up to uh, just about white, if not white. Uh, and that's what we're going to do here. I just put some white ink, and I love shooting ink through an airbrush because uh, it is just so smooth. It really is. All right. Um, so next up, I am just adding some sky blue onto that white ink, just slowly building up that transition, making it glowing, even giving a little bit of speckle effect. And I don't care about the speckle effect because I kind of want to make the cube look like it's like some outer space glowing kind of funky thing, you know? And uh, so, yeah, I was just having some fun with that. And... Um, so stepping up the blue each time in succession, uh, and I go all the way up to a blue ink from Vallejo Game Color Ink. Vallejo Game Color Inks are really forgiving when it comes to inks, and I highly recommend it for the beginners that are using uh, inks through an airbrush. FW Ink is also a great ink to get uh, as well. Liquitex, their white stuff is really good. Okay. So now I'm going to go straight ink, 
right there and you just see that transition if the camera ever stops getting blurry uh all right <laughs> you see the transition there you can see that blue ah oh, that inner blue box now i'm just hitting the areas that are black right now i'm just trying to bring it into the blue so it can appear like the entire cube is blue and there's some elements inside the cube that are kind of like glowing out uh and to finalize a cube i'm gonna start painting the gears up uh anything you want to be more natural in the paint job you don't want to leave it uh chrome or anything like that you kind of want to paint it because since you're painting the rest of the object it kind of ties it in together if you're painting the gears as well it really makes it look if not it looks i don't know it's kind of off base. I always put paint on everything that I put onto a model and or a base. I just don't leave anything as is. All right, some Steinol Res primer. Uh, this is brown this time. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I am trying to get like a rusty bottom. And what I'm going to do is zoom chipping medium. And I'm going to like to get let the rust kind of protrude uh, but when you want to do rust you go start off with this nice brown color um, and and then I'm going to uh, add once I have the color in there some war colors orange and if you don't have war colors paint man they're pretty I'm woman uh, they're pretty awesome because they're gel based medium so they're very much like your scale 75s you know and um, you know it, it doesn't take it can take a lot of water to thin them out without using medium to thin it out because the paint molecules, since it's a gel medium, kind of sticks together. So that means it gives you a little more liberty uh, when it comes to thin thinning it out, uh, especially through an airbrush, uh, because you can add more water to it and you don't have to worry about, you know, possibly over diluting it, you know, and having all those like spidery marks and stuff like that. And uh, without, you know, adding medium and still being safe. Um, if you add too much water to something, you're going to get like this really glossy look to it. So if you do have glossy look, that ultra matte varnish is a great way not only to get rid of the glossy look, but also to seal in that right there because I'm going to throw some chipping medium onto this sucker with some flow improver. Uh, so flow improver and chipping medium right there. All right, that's from Vallejo. And I'm going to add that to the surface. But I want to make sure that I protected that surface underneath before I added this chipping medium to it. Okay, so... We're going to add that chipping medium, just slowly bring up the edges. If you never knew how to use chipping medium, this is an easy tutorial for you to check out for uh, using the chipping medium. Very simple to do. Um, and then finally, what you're going to do is you're going to, what well, I did, was add primer to it, that gray primer on top, starting with a gray primer, nice neutral. This is from Steinol Res right there. And then I'm going to do some heavy blue gray. I really do love that heavy blue gray. <laughs> I really do. And I'm going to add a stripe to it just so I can look, make it, you know, appear like metalish gleam going straight through. Uh, I'm also going to paint the middle section uh, in yellow, although that footage got lost, so I'm really sorry about that. All I did was tape in the edges like, and left the middle exposed and then paint it with some uh, yellow. So there it is. <laughs> it's very simple to do uh, to do that. Okay, some water now. And what we're going to do is go reactivate the chipping medium underneath uh, after everything is dry. So just straight water, just diluting it, uh, the paint on top, and very similar to the hairspray technique as well, where you're going to take something sharp and you start poking hole right into the paint. Now it's going to poke the upper layers like the yellow and the gray. And what's going to see through is what you actually uh, preserved underneath with... Um, the ultra matte varnish and you're gonna have that brown you're gonna have that orange underneath and it's really gonna pop through so it's actually going to look like it's rusty and it's, it's a great technique and it's really weird because instead of an additive thing when you're adding layers to it it's uh, subtractive so you're taking things away from it and it's kind of fun to do that to experiment with that if you have never used chipping medium or the salt technique then I highly recommend that you try it. I mean, this art that we do is definitely all about experimentation and having fun. And, you know, it's an objective marker. Who cares? You know, you don't have to worry about it. You know, so many people are so worried about making mistakes. If you take risks, 
that's how powerful your rewards are going to be. If you never take risks, then you know you kind of you got to you stay into a painting rut if you don't take any risks. So try to do a little bit of projects where you don't really care too much about. Like um, sometimes I grab a Reaper miniature and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna try this new technique, and if it doesn't work out, who cares? You know, <laughs> just having some fun. Nobody cares. It doesn't matter. Uh, you know. I don't, I don't buy like a Warhammer expensive model and then like experiment on that. Well, sometimes I do. I don't care. <laughs> but if you're worried about that stuff, then, you know, grab something else. An objective mark is a great way to start. All right. Just protecting everything and sealing everything in with some ultra matte varnish as well. Uh, this way, you know, you actually preserve all the stuff and it doesn't reactivate if you get it wet again. Um, it looks pretty cool uh, as a whole. All right, so next up, what I'm going to do is oil wash. I'm going to dirty it up because it is the uh, 40K universe where everything is just so, no, so, so dirty. <laughs> everything is, nobody, nobody's walking around cleaning stuff in the 41st millennium. You know, I think the maids were fired or something, or the, the maids union did not, you know, follow through with this one. It's in 40K. It's like, yeah, no, there's only war. That's it. I wonder how people repopulate if there's only war. I'm just saying. I'm just, how, where does all these people come from? There's no hotel rooms. All right, anyway. Uh, <laughs> there has to be civilization somewhere. I think established civilization in order to, you know, uh, procreate and have thousands and thousands more for Astro Militarium and all these other kind of places, right? So then there has to be something. All right, uh, I'm going to do that burnish gold again a technique, but this is kind of reversed order, so I'm going to start off with, um, well, a little bit of the bottom, a little bit of the copper on the bottom, and then going to the top, and I did a video about this as well if you want to see the technique. Very, very simple uh, to do. Usually you paint the whole thing copper and then gold, but I started with gold and I, I reversed it. <laughs> I reversed the process because sometimes it's like, ooh, I was supposed to have a fade on that. I'm like, oh. Okay. All right. Time to put it all together. And it's as simple as bringing a whole bunch of little elements together, making them fun and interesting. And then just, you know, putting a number. This is the biggest one. A number. I want to know the number of the objective that I'm on. So uh, these game pieces are perfect for that. And there you go. You still have some experiments. Have some fun with this stuff. Go out and try it. And if you did try it, let me know how, what varying degrees of success you had with this. And how much fun you had and how liberating it was to do. All right. Well... I'm going to wrap up here and leave you with an outro. Later, y'all. Well, here's this objective, and I have all six objectives complete, which I'm really excited about, because now, when I'm fighting over an objective, I know exactly which number objective I'm fighting over on my battlefield. So, if you like this tutorial and found it helpful, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time on the Miniatures Paintbrush. <laughs>